Well, the U.S. spends more on health care than any other nation, according to Wikipedia, and yet it lags behind other wealthy nations in terms of infant mortality and life expectancy. And joining us now to discuss how the Supreme Court decision could change health disparities and access to preventative care is Dr. Stephen Thomas. He's the director of the Center of Health Equity in the University of Maryland School of Public Health. And welcome here. Well, we saw a lot of emotional reaction there and everything, but if we put politics aside, tell us how this is going to affect Marylanders, in particular Prince Georgians. Well, let me say that the emotion is warranted because this is a great day that uh, Fairness has come back. Uh, imagine that today, uh, with this law, insurance companies can no longer deny you care. And you see, in the old model, if you got sick, they could cut you off. That can't happen anymore. I think the other very important uh, development is that um, everyone will be in this together. And it's important that uh, we recognize that the provisions in the law will actually move us in a direction of promoting health and preventing disease rather than simply treating people after they're sick. I think this is a great day in the country and in the state of Maryland. You and I spoke a little bit earlier because when people are getting treated obviously without health insurance they end up in the emergency room and that's one of the highest expenses there are. Well you know uh, I think that somehow it's been missed that when people show up for care they are not turned away. If you're driving your car without car insurance and you get stopped, you're not going to drive that car. But if you show up in an emergency room without health insurance, you're still going to get care, regardless of your ability to pay. That is spread out over all of us who have health insurance. Now, with the law upheld, that will be spread out more broadly uh, across the population and therefore bring costs down. Now, one of the most controversial parts of this was that individual mandate and the penalties that are or not there behind it. How will that be enforced if everybody is required to buy insurance? Well, you know, there's some details in the uh, ruling that we'll have to sort out in terms of how it will be uh, implemented. But people who don't have health insurance, it's not that they don't want it. They have not been able to afford it. And so with the law in place, uh, there are provisions now to ensure that everyone has access to uh, affordable health insurance. If you're not able to pay, there are provisions for people being actually allowed to expand the roles of Medicare. And uh, if you are in that donut hole, you know, people who make too much to be on Medicare or Medicaid but not enough to afford uh, health insurance, there will be sliding scales. I think we want to watch very carefully about how this is going to be implemented here in the state of Maryland. And, and let's talk about that for a second. If we're talking about the individual mandate, and you know, there's a penalty, obviously, if you don't go out and you go to get your insurance, is it something the federal government will put maybe a line item on the taxes at the end of the year and say, you know, here, if you don't have insurance, pay it here? Well, you know, that was one of the uh, areas that, we're, that people are sorting through in the law, that the Supreme Court decision said that the that it would be that it was like a tax and that as an individual you could pay it or not pay it uh, that was one of the uh, ways that the uh, the the law was attempting to ensure that states complied if states failed to comply for example in, in signing up people uh, they could have uh, their uh, funds uh, restricted and I think that there are some details in the law that are being sorted out that that kind of stick has been uh, limited so I think the vast majority, the millions of people who don't have health insurance should feel very good about getting it. And um, I, I think that in the, in the fullness of time and with maybe programs like this, people will realize that this is a, a net good for everyone. And we've run out of time, but I just wanted to mention that things such as pre-existing conditions and uh, teenagers or young, young adults can now keep, in, uh, keep their insurance on their parents' insurance until 26. Amazing. So, yeah, so that, that can affect True Maryland. benefit. All right. Thank you so much for joining us.